thank you for this introduction. Um, I will try to reconcile two aspects. One, the aspect of this panel, which is on migration, and the general aspect of this conference, that is mapping and how maps can contribute to the research. So I understand that most of you are not directly interested in migration, but I'm sure we are all interested in, in using the maps. Uh, so I think, uh, I think uh, it's, it's not that the, um, the idea of mapping is new, but the availability of the data is, is in history, in history for the 19th century is becoming grower, it grows and grows and it's, it's uh, more common. So, and historians are encouraged to use this data also in, in order to map it. Um, so, but the, but the key issue in, in, in historical, any analysis, any statistical analysis of the data is availability of the data and, and the problem that you need to really spend a lot of time on extracting the data from the archives. And, and so far, it's not so common for historians to work in, in bigger groups. Mm, sometimes you can get the grant and hire people. For example, the, the data with, I work, with which I work uh, was extracted by five people simultaneously over a, over a year, but not, not everyone has a chance to, to have such a group. In my PhD, in my PhD, I did everything the same, and after a few years, I was exhausted. Uh, so, so that's the what what is what is new is the problem of how to convert the data into into um, accessible uh, and measurable way. Um, so I am aware that they are, in fact, historians rarely deal with big data. They deal. The only project that I know is. North Atlantic population project where they have several millions of microdata information of on on people living in Northern Europe, but that's only Northern Europe, which luckily had good modern censuses dating back to mid nineteenth century. And especially when we think about Central and Eastern Europe, uh, this data is, is almost not available. So the first census that I worked with that was carried out in the Russian Empire is from 1897. Mm. Now, I will try to show you how I use the maps, how maps uh, change the way I think, uh, how, how they help to visualize the tables because I believe no one, and, and historians also, no one makes inferences about the data just by looking on the table. <coughs> we need to visualize uh, the information, and one of the ways are maps. And, and, but I would like to show you also the risks of using maps. And, and, and I would like to show you that, that in some cases, maps may be misleading. So. Let me tell you first the geographical scope of my sources. The sources is the source is census microdata. That means the actual lists of people who were enumerated in the 1897 census. Usually, when we think about the census, we think about the aggregated summaries that were published right after the census for the purposes of the state. And usually, the original data collected by officials walking from a household to household was destroyed. But fortunately, that what, that's what happened in, in Germany. That what happened in large part in, uh, in Austro-Hungarian Empire. But fortunately, in the Russian Empire, uh, officials weren't so um, um, so very, very listening to the orders, and in many, in, in many areas, the original data is pre uh, preserved. So the data that I deal with comes from the Kiev governorate, which is oops, not this button. Which one? 
this one. So this is the key of the Vernorate. We have three areas, three districts, district of Radomesh, uh, Uyez, uh, Berdichiv, and Uman, and, and Kamenets for those. Uh, so what well, is important to say that this, this data is representative for the whole districts. It's not just the towns, not just the villages, but all the area. And, and let me explain, if, if, if you see already this map, the basic things on the map, the basic borders, the gray area over here is the area of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and its borders from uh, 1772, so the year when the first partition of the Commonwealth took place. The, the thin black lines mark the governorates, gubernias, so <laughs> The Russian Empire and the thick black line uh, marks the area of the pale of settlements where Jews could were allowed to live in the Russian Empire. But there should be added a one remark that Jews were allowed to live basically also in this area, which is Congress Poland, that is part of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, that got under the influence of the during the Napoleon Wars, until it became uh, Warsaw Duchy, and and then Russian Empire continued to keep different legal system in this area. So it was a part of the Russian Empire, but with more, I would say, more liberal uh, legal system. That's why why uh, this is not considered as the Pale of Settlement, but Jews could live there uh, as they lived earlier. Mm, the aim of the Pale of Settlement was to limit the settlement of the Jews in the Russian uh, Empire to the areas where they traditionally lived. So uh, before the partitions of Poland, there were almost no, no Jews living in, in, uh, in, in Russia. And, and when the Russian uh, Empire took the eastern, eastern lands of the Commonwealth, they, they also took the Jew, Jewish population. But, but they afraid that the Russian Tsars afraid that the, the Jews will move to, towards the Russian uh, interior, so they limited the settlement to this area. Why, why I focus on the Jews? Because I'm personally, of course, interested in Jewish history, but also I think that's the good example to show the migration and, and how mapping can contribute to the uh, understanding of uh, Migration. It's especially visible in case of, of Jewish population. Mm, okay, let me see. So I I study two things uh, when I took the census data. I compared the place of birth, which I geotagged and approximated to the district center, with the place of enumeration. So I. I, I, I call it lifetime migration. I, I, I look when when person was born and when, when was living in 1897. And another approach is to compare the place of living, place of enumeration, with the place where someone left. The 1897 census was a sort of combination of the Jura and the Fakta census. That means that basically, basically it, it was supposed to register all the people who were at, at home, but those who left for some time for and were expected to come back were nonetheless registered at, at their home, even uh, if they were absent. So this is the first map that I that I plotted. It's the map of showing where people who lived lived in this area the red area, where they were born, in, in this case Jews. So we can see here uh, several phenomena, I would say. Uh, we see, first mm -hmm. of all, that there is no border, like the very weak border between Galicia and the Russian Empire. People are moving towards uh, central Ukraine from Galicia. 
there is no border, no eastern border of the Pale of Settlement. Uh, there was no legal restrict to, for the Jews to move into the Pale of, the set of, of Settlement. But on the other hand, the west eastern border of the Pale seems to work uh, pretty good because there, are, there is no people moving from the Russian Empire to the Pale of Settlement. Mm. So uh, we could, we could, we we also see that there are some some areas, the areas which are white here over here, that were not in the part of the Polish Lithuania Commonwealth, but were part where Jews were allowed to settle in the 19th century. So we could, we can see that there is less people born in this area and 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 moving to the central Ukraine. That's sort of natural, but and, and there is one more cluster of of, of cluster of uh, places of birth uh, in the Russian uh, interior. I guess it's Moscow somewhere here and, and some other big cities. The Jews were allowed to live there only with special permissions where they could obtain for being members of the uh, merchant um, merchant social estate. So basically, these were minority. But when looking, the colors refer to clusters. Uh, like these are all 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 Jews, but the, these are sort of geo clusters, uh, like the grouping of the places of birth by proximity and number of people born in this district. It's not always intuitive and informative, but. But in some cases, it helps to understand the, to, to extract the groups of, of uh, areas where people were born and came to central Ukraine. But there is one thing. When we think about the maps, when we, where people were born, we, we have to consider places where, where Jews were allowed to live. So it's, it's nothing unusual that there are no births over here because Jews weren't living there. And it's nothing unusual that there is a, a huge island, empty island over here because it's it's police there were there are trees, there were lakes, there there were no 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 towns. So so when we think about what's and what's in the pattern here unusual, we have to consider the density of the population of the Jewish and in later case later I will show you the, the Orthodox the Russian Orthodox Mm, distribution. So, so we have to consider and weight all these points by by the population density. So, so I prepared another map in which the size of the district centers where people were born were, are weighted by the population density in the area. And we can see that some of the regions actually grow, especially this one. That means that these are regions that were relatively low people, well, in this case, Jews live, low number of Jews live, but they send to central Ukraine a high number of, high number of people. To show even uh, better the differences, I, will, I plot a third map in which, let's see, this is the third map, in which the biggest, the biggest uh, points mark the, the districts that send most, most of people compared to the population density. So contrary to the first map where we see that the biggest points are in, the, in central Ukraine, because it, it seems logical, people tend to move for, if they can, for short distances. They, so most of the people who, who lived in central Ukraine were born in central, somewhere in central Ukraine. And, and in the third map, when we consider population density, it turns out that, that the most unexpected districts that send, that has this, I would call this pushing factor, are in the Russian interior in, in the north, in, in Courland uh, and Estonia. So, and also over here, so we can in this area. This area, this area is the region, as I, as I mentioned, where Jews weren't allowed to settle until 19th century. 
So, so it seems that there is still low population number of, of Jews living there, but those who moved there in the course of 19th century, they, they tend to, I would say, send back the children to the area where Jews uh, were allowed to live traditionally. So, so this, this actually, this is the map that shows which one district is more mostly promoting migration, not the first one, which seems most uh, intuitive and uh, uh, at the beginning to plot, like the number of births per district. When we weight the, these numbers, the outcome is completely different. It's nothing unusual that there are no people born. No, there, there is, there is, this is natural migration in the central Ukraine to central Ukraine. This is not natural. So let, let's, to, uh, let's take a look at the Russian Orthodoxes, which were majority in, in, in the Russian Empire, in the pale of settlement in the Russian uh, interior. So we see, as uh, previously, that there is also naturally most people who lived in central Ukraine were born in central Ukraine, but we see that the border of the Pale of the Settlement doesn't work because this, this legal limitation didn't apply to the Russian Orthodoxes. We see also that there is less number of Russian Orthodoxes living in the Kingdom of Poland over here, and because simply they were no, no, not many Russian Orthodoxes living there until until it became a part of the Russian Empire. And for some reason, for some other reason, uh, Belarus, which I guess was more populated by Russian Orthodoxes, but they don't move to central Ukraine for some reason. So again, when we weight the data and focus on which districts has had this pushing factor, uh, the highest like, compared to the population density, we see that the picture is quite different. Here we see that most weight is put on the central Ukraine, and when we consider population density, we see that what is unusual in the migration patterns is, is the fact that there are relatively many people coming, many Russian Orthodoxes coming from the Kingdom of Poland and Belarus. I, for again, I, for the Kingdom of Poland, I, I suppose this is the phenomenon of that these newcomers, the Russian Orthodoxes that came to the Kingdom of Poland, they tend to send back the children to the area where Russian Orthodoxes traditionally resided. So let's take a look at the Roman Catholics. You, we can see again that there are lots of. Roman Catholics living in central Ukraine, but really not in this area, which were not a part of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, because it's, it's natural that the settlement of the Roman Catholics is connected with the traditional historical borders of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. And if you wait the data and look where what is unusual, we also see in the pattern of uh, migration of the Roman Catholics, we see also that. The area which is not traditional uh, for Roman Catholics is sends back the children to central Ukraine. Um, these are these are uh, Lutherans, but I think we can skip the Lutherans. Uh, short time mobility. So, so I tend to look at these maps not as a maps, not only as a maps of uh, births. Right? I tend to, uh, where people were, I tend to look at these maps as maps of men, mental maps, cultural maps, where people tradition, in what space people, people, individuals were attracted to, where they, where they came from. It's, it's much broader look. We can see the historical borders, we can see maybe zones of economic possibilities and, and, and the distractions, but Short-time mobility is, is the opposite. It's sort of a map which shows the zones where people see their future, not their past. When they see, when they, when they can try to, I would say, conquer, even if these areas were not the areas of traditional 
uh, settlement. So let's take a look at the Jews. Where Jews who live in this area, central Ukraine, when, when they tend to go to it. Short time of booty, let me explain, it's not sort of a, a permanent migration. We don't know for how long time people left the households because they were registered at the household still, even though they were absent, they were expected to come back, but we don't know if they were going to come back after uh, two days, one, one month maybe, maybe half a year. We don't know when short-time mobility changes into, into internal migration. But still, this, this something reflects about the expectations of people where they can where they can decide to go, even, even if for right now they go to, for a short time. And, and we can see that for the Jews, it's, it's, it's Poland, but it's also the area where they didn't reside traditionally, like, like Odessa, of course, like even Kharkiv, which is outside the Pale of Settlement, like Moscow. There is one thing interesting that is not visible here, it's lack of Dnipropetrovsk. Uh, at that time, and, and it's, it's hard to explain why, because we know that the Jewish population from central Ukraine moved towards there. Maybe, maybe it's a matter of, of networks, maybe, maybe it was more popular to move there from, from, I don't know, Belarus. For some reason, we don't see this city at all in the data. And, and let's take a look at the Russian Orthodoxes. What we can see now, it seems that they, they tend to move to less number of places. And uh, what is interesting, they, they also move to Odessa, Moscow, but also to St. Petersburg. And that's another city where, where Jews weren't going to for, for some reason. There were, of course, some, some going, but we don't see this in the sample that, that we have collected. So again, maybe the question of, of, of networks. It seems that j just by, and, and this is where I would like to say about the risk of the maps. It's very important what kind of data you have for sample. We use different strata for sampling the um, non-Jewish population, and we have much less uh, examples. We have, we have much less records on the uh, Russian Orthodox population. So this is uh, one of the reasons why it seems, it may seem that the Russian Orthodox has tended to go to less number of, of places. So, but still when we think that Jewish population constituted about 12% of the total population, so if we consider this, it seems that they Anyway, the they, they, they pattern was to go to more places, uh, but it's sort of, sort of misleading, uh, like mm, there are two levels of interpretation. And another thing is, maybe let's focus just on the right panel over here. Uh, the maps show that we, we could see that the places where people were born and where people were going to were focused around the places where they lived. So the distances measured from the place of birth to the place of living and or from the place of living to the place of destination of the short time mobility were decreasing exponentially. So I took a logarithm of the distance to like easy is more see it more easy what, what happens and we see that Jews tended to migrate or longer distances, like it seems, right? And 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 the Russian Orthodoxes tended to migrate to shorter, uh, to places being closer. Uh, but but all those maps that I showed you just just plotted one social variable: Jews con uh, versus non-Jews versus, versus Russian Orthodox. How do we know that people really divided? between those two groups. In some cases, we could see, yes, the special pattern is, is clear that, that says Jews were not allowed to live outside this uh, pay of settlement. So, uh, so they were not living. We could see that this factor really works. But if we consider, for example, what, in, what other factors influence the, uh, the distance, 
we don't have time to go through over this, but there are other factors. If you do regression on uh, where uh, the dependent variable is logarithm of the distance, we can see that actually there is no statistical difference between uh, Jews and Russian Orthodoxes. There is no star, so there is no, uh, no significant difference. What, what, what is important, what contributes to the distance of uh, short-time mobility is, for example, literacy. Those who read, those who can read and write, they tend to migrate for longer distances. It's also agriculture. It's, it's uh, those who are involved in, in agriculture, they tend to stay at the same place. They are attached to land. And, and what else? Those, the males, for some reason, uh, in, in this, in this uh, the males tend to stay. For some reason, uh, it's female who tend to uh, have stronger short-time mobility. Maybe these are servants going to other towns. So, so the, the key, the key uh, lesson from this slide is that religion is, is, is in case of short-time mobility, not important. So if we plot the maps between the showing differences between, between uh, different groups of religion, we may not be explaining the, all the detail that is in, in the data. Uh, so, yeah, I think the conclusions are we can learn about the direction, the invisible borders, but we usually need some additional background data besides what we have collected. In my case, it was the density of the population and, and the knowledge about the historical borders. And, and we usually, maps are not, not enough to like, understand everything that happens in the data. We usually need some additional more formal analysis of, of the data. Thank you. Uh, questions, comments? Hello, uh, my name is Taras Nazaruk and I have a question that is related to actually probably both presentations, uh, this one and the previous one, because uh, in the previous presentation we had this case of uh, migration from the um, from the Russian Empire to the United States, and uh, this was kind of external migration, and there is a data about external migration, but, and there is a, a question whether uh, pogroms influenced uh, this migration or not, and, uh, the, but there is also internal migration uh, within the empire that is, uh, has been shown in this presentation, and it tells that there was a migration from certain parts of the uh, Russian Empire to, to other parts, to other cities. And in the previous presentation, we saw some, uh, some uh, cities that has uh, uh, this number of uh, migration to the US larger than the, the other cities. So my question would be whether uh, this issue of internal migration can explain something for the external migration uh, uh, in this case, and whether this uh, mm, this research, this project, can be applicable somehow to to understand external migration, like in the previous presentation. Shall we collect more questions? Sophia. I will ask because I have a very small technical question. When you explore the influence of different factors, uh, did you use multiple regression analysis or linear regression analysis? So, did you control for other variables while exploring the the factor of each of the variables that you mentioned? Mm -hmm. I got lost. Yeah. Okay, so it's not a technical <coughs> question or statistical. How I mean, exploring this area, but not only historians and people who are writing, talking about it, has had problems with naming the place. You know, how many names for the city, and when you write, and it seems that digital can help, you know, like be more flexible without, and maybe introduce a bit of ambiguity. But I actually, I did have a problem when you say central Ukraine all the time, because <laughs> it's, 
was it central Ukraine? Was it not central Ukraine? What does it mean? Then we now are describing the place and imaginary boundaries and geography. We use central Ukraine or Ukraine in the late 19th century. And you know, you take it from there and you can imagine where it's kind of going. Interrupt yeah, uh, yeah, versus external. It's 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 good question. It's hard to measure both at once. Uh, actually, I, I I try to avoid this this division because we see actually that there are people coming to central Ukraine or Ukraine <laughs> from uh, from abroad. So is it is it internal? So is it is it internal? It's 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 international also. It's international and internal. We see, we could see probably because because people who who leave uh, who leave houses for for abroad, they they usually are not considered as those who will come back shortly. So so they are not registered. But in in another type of of uh, study that I did um, while studying Jewish Jewish migration is that I, I try to see whether experience of the previous experience of the migration, internal, let's call it internal migration, contributes to the decision to, li to living to the US. And the answer is, is, is I, I did a survival analysis, and the answer is no. Those who migrated to central Ukraine, to, in my case, uh, Uman and Kamenis Podolsky, those who were born somewhere out, outside, they don't, they tend to migrate less to the US. So that there, is, there is negative. At least in those two cities, <laughs> negative uh, correlation. Mm, now, the type of regression, I think it's called multivariate re linear regression. Uh, that maybe you know better. Uh, <laughs> names of the cities, uh, that's, that's the problem. That's why I said that I approximated the, the, the places of birth to the center, district centers, squeezed centers. Because for many cases, even there was no uh, village or town or town name given in the in the census. There was only a district where someone was born. So this is sort of approximation uh, to the city center. If we can assume, I think that this is random aspect. We, we that 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 the approximation shouldn't really influence the interpretation and the. The regression. It's more about area because you, I mean, contemporary, your archives are in central Ukraine. No, like I know, but, but I think that was in a, Russia. It's how you uh, But the area and the central Ukraine. Okay, maybe I yeah, misunderstood the question. The central Ukraine, I use the term, I, 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 I wonder, but in 18th century, 17th century, when you look at the maps of the of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, there is clearly in many maps written Ukraine in the area which I studied, in the area of the uh, key governorate. It's not Podolia, it's not Volynia, it's, it's Ukraine. So I use this more in, term, in terms how it was used in, in the tradition of the Polish-Lithuanian geography. Maybe I shouldn't then use Central because it was just Ukraine, <laughs> right? Uh, but I think it's it's a when you ref, when you do study on the key governorate, it's allowed to use the word Ukraine is not anachronism because it, it was used in the 17th and 18th century for this area and it continued to be using a, a, in the 19th century Polish, at least, historiography. Uh, yeah, uh, shortly, I would to add a short thing to a question about internal and external and uh, we we'll have a question to you. So, Yes, of course, these things are related. It's not unique Russian Empire, Jewish or those others or other uh, contexts in all histories of migrations that we know. Mobility related to uh, internal migration. In case of Russian Empire, there are a, a, a lot of things that we could uh, prove by. Uh, Research, uh, research like Thomas did, for example, this question with uh, uh, literacy. Of course, all of scholars agreed that literacy affects internal migration, but uh, no one uh, till nowadays can prove or disprove it because we don't have uh, enough data to, uh, not about migrants, but about sending community before census. It's not possible to check 
what percent of uh, people who can't write their name lived or and where, what percent stay. So, but of course it's related and. Uh, uh, even some patterns uh, we could see in a similar way, but question to your um, mapping of li uh, lifetime migration, you call this process. Um, so what do you think about all these points that left behind your maps? Because uh, I have feeling that there are a lot of these points. For example, you mentioned case of Kharkiv, uh, uh, where uh, most of uh, Jewish com uh, the majority among Jewish community were the migrants from Pale of Settlement, but uh, officially uh, majority of these people came from Kiev, uh, not because they uh, were born there or they uh, were living there, just be because Kiev was something like transit point between fr from Pale to other imperial city. And uh, I assume that in a lot of cases you could have uh, these transit cities when people spend some time and how... Uh, so do, do, do we have any chance to reconstruct this way between this small and big point or... Uh, yeah. yeah, and others think uh, it's uh, more about Galicia, border between Galicia and... Uh, Russian Empire. So, from your maps, it seems that uh, for uh, Jewish and Catholic population of uh, uh, South Northern Russian Empire, bo border with Austro-Hungary was much more flexible than for Orthodox. Uh, so, it on your map, from map, from your maps, I have some uh, this impression. Uh, could you prove it or <coughs> disprove, or it's just some image that makes this uh, <coughs> for more uh, Russian uh, so, uh, than for flexi flexibility of border between empire for Jews and Catholics uh, in comparison with Orthodox. So okay. it was it was on the map that uh, these two groups okay. were was more uh, in, in, in regards to points of view, of course we don't know this. This is another approximation we have to do. As, assume that there were not too many and there was no no constant pattern in the points between the place of birth and place of living. Um, so so it could happen, of course, and, and, and anything in between. There is a the census register place of registration also, but which could be something else than place of living as place of like Propiska in Ukrainian, but but it could also for the children be that, that, that the children were born in other other city but they were they inherited the, the place of registration from their parents so it's it's not very maybe not very informative also. And I think the flexibility of the border in case of the Orthodox, Russian Orthodoxes is 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 the question of the population density of the Russian Orthodoxes in Galicia that were I guess very few of them, and, and that's the reason. But maybe maybe we would have to take a look at the weighted map and, and see maybe maybe uh, maybe this this helps to explain. Uh, but but it's just it's not really about the reasons; it's about, about what we see, and we can assume that this 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 border uh, plays a factor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm Svedenka from Kharkiv, I'm an architect uh, from university. Uh, and I have, uh, as an architect, I have a question. Uh, for me, very important, uh, interesting part was about distance. And uh, if, we, um, tell about, if you tell about distance, uh, you can tell about the road and about the time when the people move from uh, part one to up to from point A to point B. And uh, we understand the people moved, uh, between, uh, moved between Kiev and Kharkiv. Uh, speeder, uh, uh, um, as from uh, Oman to Kharkiv, because we have a uh, railway. If uh, you... Um, Uh, can you? Uh, Is it yeah, possible to uh, consider the railway network in, in the yes, research? Yeah. 
can you put the uh, uh, ways to you um, marks? Yes, that's that's one thing is putting the ways on the mark. Maybe one more question and then we finish the session. That you would answer. Yes. Uh, from Harper, another question. Um, except uh, this uh, beautiful uh, maps. Uh, you maybe have uh, data sets or databases uh, that you use for this uh, visualization. Uh, is it possible to um, download your data sets uh, to use uh, this for, for example, my personal analysis? Okay. Okay. Railways. One thing is to put railways on the map, another thing is to measure the influence of the railways on the migration, which could be done, I guess, in some more sophisticated way, like geographic regression and, and, and or, or adding one other column in the data, whether some place had the, the uh, train station and some, some not, but, but this would be more work required on, on this. That's a that's, that's good idea, but I, I don't think there are any, any databases, it's availability of the databases on the, on the development of the railway, railway structure. As a historian, we have to limit to the most important things uh, uh, that are uh, for the research, the research that we are doing. So this would be another big study. Mm, and, and the availability of the data, of course, uh, in, uh, for the purposes of academic research, uh, I, I see there is uh, no, no problem, especially in the aggregated, uh, aggregated before, at least before the research is published in the aggregated uh, form, it's, it's, it's possible. It's also all these maps are, I, I, I created on cartel.com, so, so uh, you can, I can share with you even the link and, and you can see, uh, access the data used for the plotting the maps.